please? Hi, uh, my name is Paula Thompson, and my son actually is on probation, and he's trying to get in the house. And okay, he what's, has, your, what's your son's name? Christopher Thompson, and he's like, I hear you calling the police, Mom, please don't. Uh, and he's like, is he threatening you or anything? Well, I won't let him in the house because he went and bought some alcohol. Okay, I can send an officer out to you. If anything changes, give me a call back. <laughs> Are you still there? Yes, like he's, he's pounding on my window. No, I'm killing you. I'm dead. I'm alive. Wow, thank you. The thing inside of me is like the appetite to go off this. Does he uh, stay here with you? Occasionally. He doesn't really have anywhere to live. He's living a parasitic life. He's an adult who can't seem to hold down a job. He's been in trouble with the law on and off. He's continuing to drink despite it being terms of his supervision. And these markers are all indicators of psychopathy. You can hear the fear in Christopher Thompson's mother's voice. She's scared and she's worried about what's going to happen. And it seems like it's based off of prior behavior that's been problematic and worrisome in the past. If you have problems with his drinking, I'd contact his probation officer because I doubt he can drink on probation. When he's like violent towards me, what mm -hmm. do I do? Call the police, put your phone on record while we're in route, so that way uh, everything's recorded as far as what he does and says. But if he's that violent and he's a, on probation and has alcohol problems, I suggest you just don't let him back in. Yep. Your hurts. All right. Good night. Yeah, you as well. Take care, dear. Um, yes, I'm getting a welfare check. Yep, and what's her name again, sorry? It's Paula Thompson. Okay, what's the situation? What's going on? Well, um, she has not, um, responded for several days, and she hasn't checked in with her boss, so I called her son, and he has now said that he, like, harmed her, and she's dead. Des Moines police were called after a co- a 50-year-old Paula Thompson noticed she hadn't been at work lately. They uh, found that there was a door ajar, and uh, they entered into the home to check on her and unfortunately found her deceased inside the home. For hours, detectives were on a search for her son, 32-year-old Christopher Thompson, and finally found him three hours later when he turned himself in to the Polk County Jail. information from you and then um, we'll get started, okay? You go, I, uh, Chris or Christopher? Chris, all right. Okay, so what, what, well, I guess we can start off, what, what caused you to go into Poole County and say you have a warrant? Because, uh, my mom's friend called and I told her that, uh, well, I, Got into a big argument with my mom. We were both drunk. I blacked out and killed her. Okay. And I told her to tell the cops. He doesn't have any emotion in his voice. He says, I killed her the same way that, that someone might say where they had dinner last night. His specific type of lack of empathy really has more of a juvenile type quality. Um, he almost seems like he has the problem-solving skills of a three-year-old, but obviously the aggressive skills of an adult, and that could be a, a bad combination. 
when did uh, when did the fight happen with your mom? On the Friday the thirteenth. At the start. When it started. So and when she drinks she gets really stupid and starts slamming things and yelling at me and telling me I'm not doing a good job at life, that I'm like a big mistake and it's always just negative. And well, the argument got really heated and, you know, she got in my face and got hers and then it escalated. I, I don't even know. When I, I had a crowbar. You had the crowbar in your hand? Well, uh, before I had the crowbar. And when I, I didn't say anything, I just went up and bam. Okay. So you didn't even hesitate to grab it. Many of us are able to regulate our emotions like a dimmer switch. We know when to turn things up, we know when to turn them down, and it's situation by situation. Thompson shows us that he really functions like a light switch. He's either on or he's off. And when he's on, he's volatile. When he's drinking and he's on, he's not only volatile, he's violent. Okay. Was she facing you when you hit her? Yeah. Okay. And what what happened when you hit her? Was she able to... She went down. Right, right away? Right away. Okay. She went down. I, 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 and then I hit her a few more times. And she stopped moving. He almost sounds surprised when reliving it that it happened that fast but he also then goes on to say he hit her a few more times and that's where we see with individuals like thompson that have these psychopathic tendencies there's that inability to regulate their emotions and their rage and it just came stumbling out and she was on the floor and she was just laying in there and i didn't know what to do so i i put her back dragged her in her room and closed the door and i was shaking it Everything was over. Okay. And as far as you said, the, the fight escalated, so obviously it started off just verbal. Yeah. Right. Then did it get did it get physical from there, and then you got the crowbar, or did you, how, how did that kind of go down? More as she was getting in my face, and I just snapped. She wouldn't let me close my door because I, I was like, I was done. And it was. So you were trying to go into your room to kind of separate or whatever. And when she said it was her house, so doors open. She said that it, she's basically telling me that my life was just a pathetic piece of and that everything was hers, all of it was hers. I was in wearing everything. And I just, I blew up. I just couldn't take it anymore. Victim blaming is a common characteristic in psychopathic behavior. He's saying, well, she was negative. She kept telling me I wasn't living life well. And so essentially it's her fault that he acted the way that he did and, and ultimately killed her. You can see how he had this narcissism narcissistic injury. When someone is very narcissistic, which is almost always uh, what you'll see in psychopaths, they have a very fragile ego. It's inflated, almost like a balloon that's been inflated just about at its capacity. And if anything is going to disrupt that ego, it's going to burst. And you said earlier, um, at one point you said you blacked out. Okay. It was when I attacked. I was going to attack. <laughs> What exactly were you feeling, or what exactly, what do you mean by blacked out? Like, just, I didn't see anything else, but just, I wanted it to be over. And so I just kept hitting him. Okay. What was going through your mind whenever that was going? Rage. Just anger. I wanted it to be over. What he's talking about was kind of a white rage where he was just um, fully unhinged not trying to control his behaviors anymore 
he seems to remember it pretty well, so I, I don't think he, he blacked out. He may be trying to get across the point where he's, he's not planning to do this. He didn't try to do it. He was just reacting. He's trying to take away some of the potential blame. When did you realize that that she was dead? All the, there was a blood spill leaking out. Okay. And then did you move her into the room pretty much immediately or just in the hallway for a little bit? Like, what was the time frame on that? Yeah. She was in the hallway for about, like, ten minutes. Okay. I, I did just stand there, just, like, staring. Looking back at it, it's so jumbled in my head. Yeah. What were you doing in those ten minutes while she was, before you moved her? Oh, I stood there, then I walked over to the couch, and I sat down, and I looked over at her. And then I looked down, and then I looked at the TV. Then I got up, and that's when I decided I should move her. Ultimately, the decision to move his mother's body really seems like it was more about a convenience for him that it was just offensive and messy. So this all happened Friday night. Were you at home up until today? Yeah. I think I covered this. Uh, I'm just... Yeah, to get more alcohol. What would you buy down there? Just fireball okay. and a pack of cigarettes. How many times did you go down there in those four days? And twice. Twice. Were you watching TV or? I was playing games and watching TV, yeah. You have to think about at that point five days with a with a dead body that you're living near. It's going to start smelling. Uh, he, he was sitting there playing video games. He was kind of living this fantasy life where no one was bothering him. His decision to go about his daily routine playing video games, continuing to drink, continuing to watch television as if life is normal, could be both his own way of processing and coping with what he had just done, that he just distances himself from it psychologically. It may also be a very clear indication of the shallow affect and the lack of empathy and remorse that this very psychopathic individual experiences. Okay, did you call and tell anybody about this in the last five days? No. Just my mom's friend today. Right. What, what made you come to that? Conscience. Right. So, heavy weight. Okay. So I just spoke with Lori. Um, what did you do after you told her what had happened? I left the house and I just went up to Walmart and waited in the parking lot. What did you do there? I just sat in the, I, well, I went inside and I bought some popcorn chicken and I went back to the truck and ate it. Someone who has a conscience and a heavy heart is probably not the same person who, after admitting to a murder, drives to Walmart and goes and eats popcorn chicken in their car. And then I saw that, you know, he had called probably 30 minutes later or something and, and uh, called him back. And he said, well, I can't continue to lie to you. You know, I killed her. And then he just was oh, like, he just paused. Like, that was also, I don't know, matter of fact, later. Right. Thompson's actually utilizing the same passive approach to his life that he always has. He doesn't make any decisions. He lets the world come to him, and he lets life happen to him. He didn't turn himself in right after he killed her. He turned himself in after his mother's friend discovered that she was missing, and he started to realize people would start coming around to the house. He worked at the cold storage, and then he started somewhere else and didn't like it. And, and I can't remember what place that was, but then it's been probably a couple months. Mm -hmm. But he has like a felony, like he's, um, so with the record. There are multiple instances of Mr. Thompson's problematic behavior, starting with early teens. 
So for instance, he's staying with a friend. When they ask him to wash the dishes, he gets upset and ultimately ends up trying to run over them with a vehicle. And in another instance, he is staying with a different family friend and this family friend asks him to leave and he threatens them with a knife. Thompson is really showing us an individual who can't deal with his emotions. He doesn't know how to deal with disappointment, with rejection, with rage. He also has a very low threshold for when those emotions kick in. If he's asked to do anything he doesn't want to do, like a spoiled child, he tantrums. Before we go on, can I say that there is a cat there that's one of our rescue cats. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what's going on at the house. Look, I need to get the cat out of there. Is, is there a cat at the house? There was. Okay, where's the cat? It's gone. Okay, what happened to the cat? I just got rid of it. Bye bye. Did you kill the cat? Yes, I killed the cat. How'd you kill it? I just broke it. Like, with your hands or? No, with the crowbar too. Where's the cat now? I threw it in the trash. Out back? In the big garbage can. In the big garbage can. I was still pissed. Everything about mom, everything is she, everything's hers. When did you kill the cat? Right after. Individuals who exhibit extreme levels of antisociality as well as psychopathy do sometimes have a pattern of harming animals. Sometimes they harm animals because they're more vulnerable. They are easy to coerce and to control. He just doesn't seem connected to the value for life. In the end, there's no point in running. Right. Did you have like any idea of where you might actually go to? No. Okay. That's another reason too. Like, what's the point? Okay. And instead, I'll just do the right thing. Were you sleeping in your room or in the living room? I was sleeping in my room, and I would keep waking up with fits, and it was horrible. Thompson acknowledges that he had some difficulty sleeping, knowing that his dead mother was in the other room. But for days, he continued going about his daily routine. He left the house. He went to the liquor store and got more alcohol, as if he hadn't just killed his mother. We have to wonder if a friend had not noticed that she was missing, how long would Thompson have continued living in the home with his decomposing mother? I'm glad. I, as you said, I actually feel a lot better yeah. now. Ultimately, he's confessed. It's over. Now he doesn't even have to worry about the real cleanup of her body. He can just move on to an incarceration where he won't have to take care of himself yet again. He doesn't to take care of the mess that he created at the house and he can go on to the next stage of his life, basically allowing someone else to care for him. So no matter how we get it, my place stole it now. Well, Thank you.